Here, transcribed, is another in NBC's great parade of new shows. And now, Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, private detective. Hello there, this is Diamond. If you happen to wake up some morning and spot something walking in front of your house and it looks like Santa Claus with jaundice, don't turn the hose on him. He's not on fire. He's just wearing the newest thing in men's fashions. They call it the bold look. And it's supposed to be the masculine answer to Dior's new look for women. It's an answer, all right. Like walking up to your best girlfriend and slicing her down the middle with a broadsword. Now, if you haven't seen it yet, just close your eyes and try and picture yourself in the bold look. Imagine walking down Fifth Avenue, very casual, decked out in a new bright purple non-shrinking suit, pastel shirt, yellow maybe, hand-painted tie and argyle socks. Got it? What do you think? Pretty bad. About the only thing I can think of that's more gruesome is that little murder I got mixed up in last week. It started in a house out on Long Island. A guy named Harry Baker was getting involved with his private secretary. Here are the papers you wanted, Mr. Baker. Oh, thank you, Connie. What time is Mrs. Baker going shopping? She didn't say... This afternoon sometime. Oh, where is she now? In her room. Come here, Connie. Harry, no. Supposing she comes down. I didn't see you last night. I missed you. I got hold of the man you wanted. His name's Nat Fox. He wants 500 for the job. Oh? Well, what's the matter? That's what you wanted, wasn't it? Connie, I had a lot of time to think last night. And? Well, I'm not sure. I don't know if this is the thing to do. You don't know? Oh, Harry, we've gone through this a dozen times, and I won't go through it again. If you haven't got the backbone... Oh, my dear, you know it's not that. No, I do not. I'm sick and tired of living this way. Not being able to be seen with you, watching you being pushed around by that old shrew. Oh, I'm not going through the whole thing again. Please, Connie, can't we wait for a while? My wife's well past 60. Sooner or later... And in the meantime, you live off the skimpy little allowance she doles out to you. No, Harry, no. I want us to live like two normal people. If you're going to start changing your mind just when it looks like we can have all these things, I'm through. Now, Connie, wait a minute. No. If you want me, then you've got to go through with it. Well? You know I want you. I love you more than anything in the whole world. Then get that old biddy out of the way, or I promise you, you'll never see me again. <sighs> all right. Oh, don't look so worried, darling. Nothing's going to go wrong. I already fixed it with this Nat Fox. You'll be in the department store the same time as your wife. Oh, Harry, think of the wonderful life we can have. All that money's going to be ours. We can go to Europe and live the way we should. Yes, sir. I don't know. I'm a little worried about this Nat Fox. Uh, I'll give him the $500, but if he finds out what happened, he'll be in a good position to blackmail us. Don't you worry about Mr. Fox. He's my affair. You just leave everything to me. Well, well, well. Hello, Otis. Uh, what do you want, Diamond? I thought I'd drop in and see the lieutenant. Aren't you glad? You want me to make you feel good or do you want the horrible truth? The truth, Otis. I'll steal myself. You turn my stomach. I couldn't without a bulldozer. Ah, uh, very funny. <laughs> when are you going to go on a diet, Sergeant? Eh? You're beginning to look like Dumbo with a goiter. Uh... Hello, Walt. Oh, no. Who's dead this time? No, don't be silly. I just came down to talk to see how you were. I don't believe it. Say something without corpse in it. Your smile is like the first dawn of an Indian summer. You said Indian. So what? If you said it, he's dead. All right. If that's the way you feel about it, goodbye and good luck. Oh, now, wait a minute. Stop being an idiot. That's all right, Walt. I understand. Well, now, come back here. You know very well I'm glad to see you. And you think just because I come down to see you, I've gotten mixed up in some kind of a murder. 
Oh, a fine friend. Now, you stop acting like that. You're a worse ham than Otis. That did it. I'll never send you a good dead body again. Is that a promise? Is what a promise? That you'll never send me a good dead body again. Oh, want me to break the law, huh? Hold out police evidence. Of course not. You know I was only kidding. Just like the police force, making fun of a corpse. I have never made fun of a corpse. So that's what's the matter. What? Too serious. That's what's ruining your stomach. Oh, now stop that. You know what's wrong with my stomach. I've been working too hard, that's all. So the next time I find a corpse, you'll want to take a vacation. This precinct is more corrupt than I thought. What do you mean, corrupt? Just what I said. I find you a corpse and you won't even look at it. You want to go on a vacation. I don't want to go on a vacation. I'll look at the corpse. What corpse? The one you wanted me to look at. There you go, acting like I've gotten mixed up in another killing. Trying to make it look like the corpse is mine. What? Well, it's not my corpse. It isn't? No. Well, whose is it? Well, you know. You tried to frame me with it. I did not. Don't you try to shove that body off on me. Yeah, what is it? Oh, hello, Helen. It's for you, Rick. Thanks. Hi, baby. I'll hold it a minute. Walt, you better do something about that body. Hmm? Oh, oh, yeah. Otis, put in a general alarm. Diamond's found another killing. Oh, wait a minute. No, Walt, it's your killing, remember? Oh, yeah. Forget about the general alarm, Otis. I've got... Oh, Diamond. Sure, Helen. I'll meet you at the store. Oh. Sure, sure. I love you. Bye. Oh. Walt. What a funny look. You're all red. Oh. Walt. Walt, you're turning blue. Oh. Well, I got to go shopping with Helen. I hope you find the body. Bye. Lieutenant, I'm still waiting. Sergeant. Yeah, Lieutenant? Shut up. I don't know why I do that to Walt, but I always get such a kick out of tying him up in knots. When he takes the bait, he goes for it hook, line, and sinker. It's a good thing Helen called and asked me to go shopping with her, or he might have blown a fuse. I don't generally like the idea of shopping, but she said it was Francis's birthday, and any kind of an afternoon with Helen could always work its way into a wonderful evening. What do you think I ought to get him, Rick? I'll get him some shirts or something. Hey, look at these. Rick, get away from that counter. What's the matter? My hip's too big? Oh. Oh, I wonder if these come in baby blue. Rick, now stop that. People are looking. Is there something I can do for you? Hmm? <laughs> you seem to be interested in the lingerie. Is there something I can show you? Oh, uh, <clears throat> I'm looking for something for a birthday. Oh, well, then may I suggest a nightgown, perhaps? We have some lovely numbers. Uh, this is for a butler. A butler? Uh, yes. Oh, then you were thinking of getting something for the lady, too. Uh, no. Just seeing whether the baby blue went with my eyes. Well, really. Oh, come on, Helen. Rick, she must think you're crazy. Five minutes more and there wouldn't have been the slightest doubt. <laughs> this is fun. Rick. Hmm? That woman. What woman? The elderly one over there with the mink stove. Oh, yeah. I just saw her put a box of stockings in her purse without anyone seeing her. You saw her? Yes, but the clerk didn't. And she left the counter without paying. I know. You know? Well, sure. I spotted her five minutes ago. I'm not a very good shoplifter. That's stealing. Shouldn't we tell the manager or something? Oh, the store detectives are sure to have her spotted. Why don't they arrest her? Point of law, baby. They can't put the arm on her until she steps out of the store. Now, look. She's going out the front door. Just watch. She's out. She's just standing there on the sidewalk. Oh, that's funny. They must have spotted her. She was too careless. Look, that big car is pulling up and she's getting in. They're driving off. Well, maybe the store dicks were looking out the window. Well, I'm going to tell that clerk. I remember her description. Oh, now, Clerk! Helen. Yes? Oh, did your husband decide that they did go with his baby blue eyes? He's not my husband, and that's not why I called you. Uh, she thinks yellow goes with my complexion better. Oh, yeah. Now stop it, Rick. That woman who was just at your counter. Uh, which one? We've only had about 600 this morning. Now, don't be flip with me. The elderly woman who was just here looking at the stockings. The one with the beautiful mink stole. It was beautiful, wasn't it? Then you noticed her. Of course. That was Mrs. Baker, one of our best customers. Well, Mrs. Baker is a shoplifter. Oh, you must be mistaken. I tell you, I saw her steal some sacking. I tell you, you are mistaken. Oh, now, look, look. I, I was going to stay out of this, but what Miss uh, Asher says is true. I saw her, too. Miss Asher? Yes. Oh, you have an account with us, don't you, Miss Asher? Until you started telling me I was mistaken about that woman. Oh, just one moment. Oh, Mr. Pennywig! 
Mr. Pennywick. What are you doing? I'm calling the manager. The manager? Yes, Miss Asher. I would prefer to have him explain it to you. Uh, yes, Miss Phillips. Uh, what is it? Well, I'll tell you what it is. Don't ever put Miss Phillips in the toy department. She's so nearsighted, she's liable to think the electric train is the 8th Avenue subway and climb on it at 5 o'clock. I beg your pardon? Uh, Mr. Pennywig, this is Miss Helen Asher. Oh, how do you do, Miss Asher? I heard a lot about you. You're going to hear a lot more. Oh, is something wrong? Yes. Yes, something is wrong. Miss Asher here spotted a woman stealing some stockings, and when she reported it to your clerk here, she said she was crazy. I saw it, too. Is this true, Miss Phillips? Uh, yes, sir. It was Mrs. Lillian Baker. Oh. Now, I was just trying to do the store a favor, but since you don't seem to think that the customer means anything around here, I'll see that my account is closed up. Oh, oh. now, just one moment, Miss Asher. Uh, may I talk with you in private? I don't see why. Come on, baby. I know a joint on Broadway where we can get things without the lip that goes with it. Come on. Oh, please, Miss Asher. It's about the shoplifter, Mrs. Lillian Baker. You can tell me right here. I must rely on your integrity to keep this a secret. You see, we know that Mrs. Baker stole those stockings. She steals something nearly every day. What? She's very wealthy, very eccentric, and very much a kleptomaniac. Oh. Her husband handles all her affairs, and he's instructed us to watch her and send him the bills for the goods she steals. Oh. Well, can't you break her the habit? Her husband must lock his pants in the family vault every night. Yes. She's under a doctor's care, and he advises letting her continue, but without her knowing that anyone else has found out her secret. She's quite old, you see, and her husband assures us that discovery might be very disastrous. Oh, I see. Well, I'm very sorry. I didn't know. Well, I'm not. This pixie behind all the unmentionable can get a person steamed up enough to cause a minor explosion. Well, I was just doing my duty, sir. Mr. Pennywig. Mr. Pennywig. Now what? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, well, what is it? Oh, Mr. Pennywig, we've had a jewel robbery. What? Yes, sir. Three of our most priceless gems are missing. Oh, dear. Mrs. Baker? I don't know, sir. We watch her very closely when she's looking at jewelry. But five minutes after she'd gone, we discovered the loss. Was it of any consequence? Was it? $300,000 worth. Oh, oh. Hey, wait a minute. Who else was in the jewelry department? Oh, several people. I'm so upset. Take a look over there. Where? Over there. The man in the wide pinstripe near the linen counter. Excuse me, I've got to go call Mr. Baker. Now, wait a minute. Yes? Maybe Mrs. Baker didn't lift those rocks. That man over there, was he in the jewelry department? Why, come to think of it, yes. Oh, now wait here. Rick! Hello, Nat. Hey, what are you doing? Ah, take it easy. I just want to see what you got in your pockets. Well, well, Richard Diamond. You must think you're still on the force. Someone just lifted some stones out of the jewelry department. You still in the racket? In a store like this? Are you crazy? No, but I thought maybe you were. Now, let's see your pockets. You ain't no cop. Go on and peddle your papers. It, it, you look sir. pretty silly with a broken arm. It, okay. Okay, you don't have to get rough. I'm clean. Now, yeah, well, that's better. I'll turn them inside out. Hey, what's going on here? Now, uh, meet Nat Fox, one of the better-known jewel thieves. Yes. He was in the shop about the time Mrs. Baker was. Oh, I've quit the rackets. I, uh, I just like to look now and then. Oh. Well, at least he hasn't got them on him. Oh, oh. oh what are we here? Gum wrappers. I like to chew gum. Ah, well, you chew a lot of it. Better call the law, Mr. Pennywig. Or if you say right away... Go to the devil. What? Rick! He's getting away. Stop him. Oh, relax, relax. We can always pick him up. I want to take a look at your jewelry department. <laughs> Nat Fox didn't have the jewels on him, but as he did have a lot of gum wrappers, the first thing I wanted to do was to case everything in the jewelry department. It was an old stunt. The thief chews a lot of gum, palms some jewels, and sticks them in the gum. Then he sticks the gum under something, and the confederate comes along later and scoops it up. If the thief gets spotted at the scene, he's clean, just like Fox was when I searched him. Well, I looked under everything, on everything, in everything. There was a lot of gum, all right, but no jewels in any of it. Rick, couldn't someone have picked it up already? Well, that's the only thing I can come up with, unless this Mrs. Baker really did steal them. Well, uh, the police will be here in a few minutes. No, uh, a clerk. Yes, sir? Uh, can you remember who was in the jewelry department when you discovered the jewels were missing? Well, this Mr. Fox and Mrs. Baker had already left. But I believe there were several women. Yes, there weren't any men, just several women. Uh huh. Well, thank you. Come on, Helen. The robbery detail can take it from here. Well, uh, thank you very much for your help, Mr. Diamond. Oh, uh, where can the police get in touch with you if they want to ask any questions? They know me. 
And if you ever need any guidance, just look me up in the book on the private detective. Can't miss it, but one of the biggest ads. Helen and I got out of there just as the prowl cars were pulling up at the curb. I stuck my tongue out at a few old friends and climbed into her king-size convertible. We took a couple of turns around Central Park and she dropped me off at the 5th Precinct and my dear old buddy, Lieutenant Levinson. Don't you dear old buddy me. You get out of here. Temper, temper, temper. I will not be subjected to any more of your fiendish humor. I won't go through another one of these routines of yours for promotion. <laughs> I promise I'll be good. Oh, no, you don't. That's the most dangerous thing you could say. Yeah, what is it? Suicide, Lieutenant. See? See, look what happens. It already has happened, Lieutenant. She did it 20 minutes ago. I wasn't talking to you, Melonhead. Now give me the dope. You got him. You shut up. Yeah, Lieutenant. Oh, not you, bird brain. Let's have the report. Oh, uh, Mrs. Lillian Baker jumped three floors from a balcony. Husband Harry Baker made the report. Port Washington, Long Island. Thank you, Sergeant. What, well, did he say Mrs. Lillian Baker? Yes, he said Mrs. Lillian Baker. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to get out to Long Island. Well, let's go. I'll grab my coat. Now, wait a minute. What makes you think you're coming along? And why in blazes are you interested in Mrs. Lillian Baker? If you know something, by heaven, I'll... Walt, Walt, you're turning blue again. Come on, I'll tell you on the way. I briefed Walt on what had happened back at the store when Helen and I saw Mrs. Lillian Baker lift the hosiery. We reached the Baker estate about 3 o'clock in the afternoon and drove up a long circular driveway to the big house. The husband, Mr. Harry Baker, met us at the door. Oh. Oh, please come in, gentlemen. Thanks. You... You'll have to forgive me, gentlemen, but I'm still a little upset. My wife was a sick woman, but I never expected her to do anything like this. Where's the body? Out in the garden. Right this way. Have you any idea why your wife committed suicide, Mr. Baker? Oh, yes. There's the body. You don't mind if I go back inside, do you? I want to ask you some questions, then you can. I understand that your wife was a kleptomaniac. Is that right, Mr. Baker? Why? Why, yes. How did you know? Mr. Diamond here saw her steal something from the store today. You mean the jewels? No, no. I mean the stockings. Did she steal the jewels? Why, yes. I, I found them under her mattress after the store called and told me of the loss. She was a sick woman. She's been stealing things for years, but she didn't think anyone knew about it. I had an arrangement with the stores that I could take care of all the things she took, but those jewels were too much. I had to confront her with the evidence. And she broke down completely when she discovered we knew her secret. Harry. Oh. Wow. This is my private secretary, uh... Lieutenant Levinson. Richard Diamond. Oh, Miss Constance Loring. Lieutenant Levinson, Mr. Diamond. How do you do? Well, pretty good. I'd like to tell you about it sometime. Don't uh, dead bodies make you a little nervous, Miss Loring? What? Miss Loring was here when my wife jumped. She's already gotten over the initial shock. Oh. Uh, she's been in the library calling some of my firms to tell them I won't be at work for a while. How long has she been here? Why, all afternoon. She's been taking some dictation. With her hat on? Oh, uh, well, you see... Ah, uh, forget I... it. Uh, tell me, did your wife jump from that balcony, Mr. Baker? Yes. Hmm, three floors. About a four-foot railing around the balcony. If you think that there's been any foul play, you can check with her doctor. He'll tell you she could easily take her own life if her secret was discovered. I'd like to talk to him. What's his number? Evergreen 54469. Dr. Leonard Bischoff. Thanks. But while you're calling him, Rick, I'd like to see those stolen jewels, Mr. Baker. Certainly. Right this way. Phone's right over there on the stand, Mr. Diamond. Would you open the safe of the lieutenant, Connie? Uh, Mr. Loring. Dr. Bischoff, please. Richard Diamond. Yes. Hello. Dr. Bischoff, this is Richard Diamond. Here they are, Lieutenant. Now, you can easily see why I wouldn't, or should I say, couldn't pay for them. Mm. Is the store coming over to pick them up? No, I told them I would bring them down. What's this all over them? Well, I, I don't They're know. They're all sticky. Got something all over them. That's uh, probably gum, Walt. Gum? Yeah, the kind you chew. Well, by the way, Baker, you were right. Dr. Bischoff says your wife was a sick woman, but he didn't think she'd care it to such extremes. Well, we never know what we will do under such stress. No, I, uh, I guess we never do. Oh, uh, Walt, can I use the car for about an hour? It'll take you that long to clean up things around here. Well, you got something? Yeah. Mr. Diamond, if you think... I don't think, Mr. Baker. I find out. Oh, uh, Walt. 
Yeah? Bye. I went out fast and climbed to the prowl car. I grabbed the two-way radio and put in a call to Sergeant Otis. He gave me the address I wanted, and ten minutes later, I was rolling up in front of an old brownstone where Nat Fox, the not-so-ex-jewel thief, was now living. I went up and knocked on his door. Well, there was nothing like finding out. Well, what do you know? Residence. Let me speak to Lieutenant Levinson, dear. He's right here. Hello. Walt, I'm over at Nat Fox's place. Now, don't say anything. Right. You remember I told you I spotted him right after the theft and shook him down? Yeah. Well, he's through giving the police department headaches. What do you mean? He can't explain the two bullet holes in his head. I called the station and had them send over the wagon, then I took off for the department store. I was sure that Mrs. Baker hadn't jumped, and I was pretty certain that whoever had knocked off Nat Fox was in on the Baker killing. Oh, hello again, Mr. Diamond. Have you heard we found out who stole those jewels? Nat Fox? Why, no, it was Mrs. Baker after all. Mr. Baker called us back and said that he'd found the stove. Oh, well, that's dandy. Well, I'm going to take your clerk who was in the shop at the time of the robbery. Take him? Yes, I want him to identify someone. I'll have him back in about an hour. Oh, well, I suppose it'll be all right. Uh, George? Yes, sir? Uh, I want you to go along with Mr. Diamond here. He wants you to identify someone. It's official, I guess. It's official, all right. When you point out a thief and a killer, it's always official. Rick, what took you so long? Walt, this is the clerk from the department store where the jewels were stolen. How are you? What's he here for? I want him to see if he can identify someone. Oh, uh, where are Baker and his lovely secretary? In the library. Come on. Now, uh, look, George, I want you to stand outside this door until I call you. Then I want you to come in and see if you've ever seen anyone in the room besides myself and the lieutenant. I'll do my best, Mr. Diamond. That's all I want. Come on, Walt. What are you up to? Surprise. Well, hello. Why, hello, Mr. Diamond. Uh, Come in. Thanks. How are you, Connie? I see you've taken off your hat. You're very observing. I sure am. Why did you kill your wife, Mr. Baker? What? All right, I'll word it a little different. Mr. Baker, why did you kill your wife? Are you insane? Everybody asks me that. Uh, Maybe I should see a good doctor. Maybe you should. Like Dr. Bischoff, maybe? He's the best in town. Mr. Diamond, you're being ridiculous. I was with Mr. Baker when his wife jumped. You shouldn't have said that. Makes you an accessory. What do you mean? I mean you're lying if you try and tell me Mrs. Baker wasn't killed. She jumped. Over a four-foot railing? Yeah. What are you getting at? How old was your wife, Mr. Baker? Oh, close to 70. Why? Pretty good health, physically? Why, yes, of course. You say you were in the house and neither one of you gave Mrs. Baker a push off that balcony, Connie? Of course. Are you sure you weren't out putting two bullets in a cheap thug named Nat Fox? I don't know what you're talking about. Rick, what is this? Who has the money in the family, Mr. Baker? Why, my wife did. And who does it go to in event of a death? To me, naturally. Naturally. Walt... Mrs. Baker couldn't have taken those jewels. She was too much of an amateur. Helen and I spotted her swiping stockings at 50 paces. Whoever did lift those rocks was a professional thief. Well, why couldn't my wife have hired Fox to do the job? Who said anything about Fox doing the job? Why, you did. Harry! Uh, Shut up. Uh Uh-uh. I just said that Nat Fox was dead and that I thought Connie killed him. I didn't kill anybody. You were just coming back from it when you bumped into us. You hadn't even taken your hat off, and you were still carrying your purse. I was just going out. Uh, Let me see that purse. You stay away from that. Anything in it? Yeah, well, no gun, but she probably threw it in the river. Nice handkerchief. I'll sue you, Diamond. Look at the handkerchief, Walt. Sticky. Give me that. Sit down, lover. (laughs) Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought there was a chair there. It's sticky, all right, Walt. That's gum. And gum on the jewels. She must have picked them up. Yeah, right after Nat Fox stuck them somewhere. Oh, you're both crazy. She was here with me all day. Yeah. Now, George. Yes, Mr. Diamond? Who's this person? You just relax. I want to find out what's going on, too. Well, George? Yes, sir? A girl was in the shop right after Mrs. Baker. That's a lie. I wasn't. I wasn't. I didn't kill anybody. One of you hired Fox to steal the jewels, then you picked them up and brought them to Baker here. 
You killed Fox to keep his mouth shut. I did not. Yes, she did. Harry! We might as well tell them. You're right, but I didn't kill my wife. I can't get first-degree murder. Why, you dirty old man. You did kill her. You told me you were going to. You were up there and you pushed her off. Try to prove it. She jumped. No, she didn't. There was a four-foot railing all around that porch. Well, she could have climbed it. That's right, Rick. She could have, but you should keep in touch with her doctor, Mr. Baker. When I was in the store today, I spotted your wife with a cane. A a cane? Yes. Dr. Bischoff said uh, she didn't want to tell you about it because she didn't want you to worry. Didn't want me to worry about what? She had arthritis, Mr. Baker. And Dr. Bischoff said she could barely walk upstairs, let alone climb over a four-foot railing. He also told me that under the conditions, her age and everything, she couldn't have lasted more than a year. You were in too much of a hurry. Okay, Walt, you run with the ball from here on. I got a date. <laughs> You didn't tell me what you did after you left me this afternoon. Oh, I just fooled around with Walt for a while to kill the time. By the way, what did you finally get for Francis? Oh, I got him something in the newest fashion. It's called the bold look. What? It was pretty ghastly, but he loved it. Oh. Tell me what you got him. Well, a purple suit. Non-shrinkable. Yes, how did you know? Uh, It figured. Go on. A green shirt, one of those hand-painted ties. Rick, where are you going? Oh, I can't stand it. Oh, that's wonderful. What is it, Rick? What is it? I thought you were supposed to be bugged on South Pacific. Oh, is that what it's from? Yep. Goes on next to closing, right after Fink's Mules. It does? You better get those tickets again. See what it's all about. Well, give me a preview. You'll hate me in the morning. There's an answer for that. Yeah. Younger than springtime are you Softer than starlight Are you warmer than winds of June or the gentle lips you gave me? Gayer than laughter, are you sweeter than music? Are you angel and lover, heaven on earth, are you to me? And when you're you, and joy invade my arms and fill... Hey, what's that? What? That, standing in the corner. Oh, Francis. That's Francis, Rick. What are the odds? Oh, yes, sir. It's me. Now, Rick, be careful what you say. That's the new bold look. Well, turn it off. It's getting bilious. Uh, don't you like it, sir? Now, Rick. Hmm? No, well, uh, uh, Francis, I, uh, I think it's... Uh... Yes, it certainly is. I think it's rather gay, don't you, sir? The gayest. Oh, my goodness, I forgot something. Does it look like a stomach pump? Forgot something? Yes, miss. The outfit wouldn't be complete without them. Well, hurry up. I'm going to black out any minute. What did you forget, Francis? The spats. Spats? Yes, sir. Seersucker spats. And they were lovely. You have just heard transcribed Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Helen was played by Virginia Gregg. Lieutenant Levinson by Ed Begley. Also in our cast were Wilms Herbert, Lorene Tuttle, Joseph Kearns, Peter Leeds, and Joe Forte. Music was under the direction of Frank Worth. Richard Diamond is written by Blake Edwards. Dick Powell soon will be seen in the screen version of the best-selling novel, Mrs. Mike. Now, this is Eddie King inviting you to be with us again at the same time next week when we will again bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.